Okay, uh, let's do some reviews first. In the early beginning of this class, we started uh, to how to classify the data. We classify a group of the raw data and find out the frequency distribution. From the frequency distribution, we can find out the where the data concentrated. Under that, in order to find out the center of the data and uh, how data spread, we learn uh, the mean, how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. All of these help us find out the center of the data. And under that, we learned based on what happened, try to find out the chance something is likely to happen in the future. So, in the later chapters, we learned the probability distribution, discrete probability distribution and a normal probability distribution. In the normal probability distribution, we try to find out the probability that the mean follow into the certain range. Means what the probability the mean equal to, you know, for example, between the the 20 to 45. So we are still trying to find out the center of the data. And if we have the estimate, we want to know how close the estimated number to the the actual number. So today we learn something new. It is, you know, we try to find something about the data, about the actual data that is out from the population. But sometimes it is very hard or it's impossible to find it. For example, we want to know the starting salaries of the new graduate whose major is accounting in the United States. It's impossible to visit everyone, to interview every new graduate whose major is accounting, whose uh, starting salary is, the average salary is. So what can we do? We take samples. We take samples. Can the sample average number represent the, the population number? And it was a theoretical base. Okay, so today we're going to learn some new theories. First, sampling distribution of sample mean. Sampling distribution of the sample mean is a probability distribution consisting of all possible sample means of a given sample size selected from population. Sounds very complicated. Let's take a look at example to understand that definition. What is a sampling distribution of sample mean? This industry has seven production employees in total. So these seven employees can be considered as a population for this industry. The hourly earnings of each employee are given in the table below. Joe makes $7 per hour, Sam makes $7, Sue $8 per hour, Bob $8, Jane 7 Art eight, Ted nine dollars per hour. The questions are: first, what is the population mean? Do you still remember how to find out the population mean? We end all these numbers up, then divided by the number of the population. That means we gonna and seven plus 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 then divided by 7 we will get the population mean. Second, what is the sampling distribution of sample mean 
for sample of size 2. Okay, this is what we are studying right now. We want to get the sample mean of the sampling distribution. So, what is the mean of the sampling distribution? What observations can be made about the population and the sampling distribution? Let's take a look. First, population mean. Mu equal to sigma x over n. Again, mu is the letter we use to designate population mean. Here, sigma my x means sum of all of these variables. n is the number of the population size equal to 7.71. So population, po remember, population mean here is 7.71. OK, two. To arrive at a sampling distribution of sample mean, we need to select all possible samples of two without replacement from the population. Then please ignore this part. This is a formula for the combination, but this is not required in our in, you know introductory statistics class. So let's find out the sampling distribution of sample mean. If we want to get the sampling distribution of sample mean, we need find out all possible sample combination okay, of size 2. So that is Joe and Sam. We take two people out. Joe and Sam. This salary is 7-7. Seven, seven. In total is 14. The mean number is 7. So sample mean for this pair of sample is 7. Joe and Sue. The sample mean is 7.5. Joe and Bob. The sample mean is 7.5. Joe and Jen, the sample mean is 7. Joe and Art, the sample mean is 7.5. You know, we got it from 7 plus 8 divided by 2. Joe and Ted, sample mean is 8. Joe and Sue, their hourly earnings respectively is 7 and 8. The mean number is 7 and 5. And so on. Uh, we list all the possible uh, samples of two and their hourly wages and we calculate their mean number. Okay, their sample means. Then the sampling distribution of sample mean is we want to know how possible you pick any pair out, anyone out, their sample mean is seven. So we already done this in the chapter 5. The probability of that is, let's count how many, you know, mean, which is 7. 1, 2, 3, okay, 3. So 3 out of the 21, there are 21 pairs of sample samples of the you know, of two. So three out of the twenty-one is the probability you pick any pair out that which sample mean is seven. The same way we can find out the probability you pick m pair out is seventy-five or eight or eight point five. Then we list them on the graph. So when the sample mean is 7, the probability is about like 14%. When the sample mean is 7.5, the probability is about 40, 44%. We find out the sampling distribution of the sample means. Can you tell this sample distribution of sample means? The shape of it look, you know, approximately a normal distribution. So that, that is one observation. Second, let's calculate the sum of the all the sample means. 7 plus 
0.5 plus until you get the last one. In total, the 21 sample means divided by total number of the samples is 20, 21. Then we finally got 7.71. This number exactly same as the population mean 7.71 we calculated in the last slide. So that is another observation. Let's turn this into a. So based on that example, the sample distribution sample mean we found out a theory. We call that a central limit theorem. What is that? If our samples of a particular size. In our last example, sample of two, right? If our samples of a particular size are selected from any population, any, the sampling distribution of sample mean is approximately a normal distribution. Here you go. That what we want. So because from the chapter seven, we already know if. A distribution is a normal distribution. Then it's very easy for us to find out the probability that the mean number follows into the certain range. So, if any population means any group of the data, no matter how you know what is the shape that a popul that a population is, if we take enough samples. And take all the samples of that size out of the population, then the sample distribution of the sample mean is a normal distribution, and the mean number of the sample distribution of sample mean is exactly the population mean number. This provide us a way to do some. You know, calculation to find out the features of their population mean. If we take samples out of it, so some features about the central limit theorem. If the population follows a normal probability distribution, then for any sample size, the sample distribution of sample mean will also be normal. If population distribution is symmetrical, but not a normal. The normal shape of the distribution of sampling mean emerge with the samples as small as ten. If the distribution that is skewed or has thick tails, it may require samples of thirty or more to observe the normality. Normality. Sorry. Normality feature. The mean of the sample distribution equal to mu population mean. And a variance equal to sigma square over n. What does that mean? That means the standard deviation of the sample distribution equal to sigma over the square root of n. Let's take a look. No matter how your population data distributed, okay, distributed. If you take the samples. Of the certain size, it start to show like normal distribution as long as the sample size large enough. When the sample size is a two, it you know appears towards kind of have a shape of the normal distribution. When sample of the six equal to six, it look pretty like normal distribution. When sample size is a thirty. Then look, all look like the normal distribution. So based on that, we can use a new method or formulas to find out the features of population mean. So first, using sampling distribution of sample mean, sigma no. What does that mean? Means population. We know about the population standard deviation. But we just need to find out the population mean. Okay, what kind of range? In which range the population mean might fall into? 
If a population follows a normal distribution, a sampling distribution of sample mean will also follow the normal distribution. If the shape is known to be non-normal, but the sample contains at least 30 observations, the central limit theorem guarantees the sampling distribution of the mean follows a normal distribution. So the requirement is or you have the population standard deviation, you know, or at least you have the 30 observations. And to determine the probability, a sample mean falls within a particular region use this Z formula. Z equal to x bar minus mu over sigma divided by square root of n. Again, just remember z value is we try to convert any normal distribution into standard normal distribution. Okay, we turn any number into the z distribution, the z value. Then using z table, we can find out the probability. X bar again is the sample mean, the every number of the sample minus mu population mean. You know, over sigma. That's a population standard deviation over a uh, square root. Of n. This situation is when the population sigma is unknown. But I decide to skip this slide. Okay, skip skip this part. We focus on understand how to use z distribution to find out the the probability. We understand that part first. Skip that one. Okay, example. Using the sampling distribution of sample mean sigma known. The quality assurance department for COLA incorporation maintains records regarding the amount of COLA in its jumbo bottle. The actual amount of the COLA in each bottle is critical, but it varies a small amount from one bottle to the next. Cola does not wish to underfill the bottle. On the other hand, it cannot overfill each bottle. Its record indicates that the amount of the cola follows a normal probability distribution. The mean amount per bottle is 31.2 ounces, and the population standard deviation is 0.4 ounces. At 8 a.m. today, the quality technician randomly selected 16 bottles from the filling line. The mean amount of the cola contained in the bottle is 31.38 ounces. Is this an unlikely result? Is it likely the process is putting too much cola soda in the bottle? To put it another way, is a sampling error of the point one eight ounces on euro. So based on the questions, there are some given information. The population population mean number is thirty one point two. Uh, population standard deviation is point four. And the sample size is a sixteen. And the sample mean is 31.38. The question is, we want to know, is 31.38 is on euro or not? Okay. In other words, we want to know if the 31.2 is the population mean, still the population mean, is still representative. How do we do this? First, find the z values corresponding to the sample mean of 31.38. Find a z value for this number. So we're going to use this formula. z equal to x bar minus mu. So 31.38 minus 31.82 over standard deviation, population standard deviation 0.4 divided by sample size take square root. We get the result is a 1.8. 1.8. The value is 1.8. So, in this graph, this is the D 
distribution. Okay. Is the distribution is the normal distribution. Thirty one point two is the population mean. It's in the middle. And the z value for it is zero. Why? Because the, the formula for the z value is remember x bar minus mu, right? And here, you know, population mean is population mean. So that's why you get it zero. So the one point three eight, we can z value for it is one point eight. So we try to find out. We try to find out. This area. We try to find the probability of observing a z z equal or greater than one point eight. We want to know the size of this area. In other words, we want to know the probability of this area. Means we want to know the sample mean follow into this area. If sample mean follow into this area, then it means means. This is not a something just due to chance. Okay. So using the Z table, using the Z table, we find out uh one point eight right one point eight Z table one point eight. Yeah, oh, come on, hold on. Give me a second. Okay. One point eight. We find a z value one point eight. So first, go to the first column. One point eight. The second digit is one point eight zero. Yeah, right. So go to horizontally to the row which handed by zero. One point eight zero is point four six four one. That is the probability corresponding to the z value one point eight. That also is the area here. Point say point four six four one. It means this area. So if we want to know about this area, we just use point five minus point four six four zero. Then we get point zero three five nine. If you ask me why use point five to minus this one, just remember normal distribution is a symmetrical, and the population mean in the middle. So this half under the curve is point five, fifty percent. Now we know this part is point four six four one. We want to know the 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 light purple area. We just use the point five minus. Point four six four one. We can get this area is point zero three five nine. So this area is, you know, very small. So what do we conclude? It is unlikely. Okay, less than a four percent chance probability. We could select a sample of sixteen observations from a normal pro population with the mean of the thirty one point two ounces and the population standard deviation of point four ounces and find the sample mean equal or greater than that number. It's kind of impossible. Okay. So we conclude the processing put too much code in the bottle. What that mean means the mean number Population mean number is still thirty one point two. So if you put it thirty one point three eight, that's too much. Okay. So I will stop here. The uh late uh the following slides is for the chapter eight. So we f stop here, and uh, uh please, you know. Look through all of the stuff and read the textbook, and finish your homework. If you have any questions, please don't feel hesitate to contact me by email.